Hey there, kickers, and welcome to Kick the Table, keeping you up to date on Kickstarter campaigns in the tabletop games category. My name is Mike. Today we're going to be doing a preview of a game from Garage Games called Rain. Uh, it's a game of diplomacy and kind of betrayal and intrigue. Uh, plays from three to seven players in just a deck of cards and some tokens. So um, before I jump in and show you the game, I just wanted to quickly talk about how I got hold of it. Um, this was a game that I was a backer of, uh, so when I first heard about it and saw it, I uh, decided I wanted to back it just from reading about it. But I was really keen on finding out how the game played, and I was also at the time looking for games that I could do preview videos of. So I reached out to the designers and asked them if they would send me a print and play copy of the game that I could review, and they agreed to do so. So this is that review. Thank you. Uh, so in a game of RAM, Players want to collect nine legitimacy points and then gain the and then gain the regency. At that point, they are the winning player and they will hold the onyx crown. And they will become the ruler of the kingdom. But in order to do that, they're going to need to figure out a way to gain these legitimacy points. There's two ways of doing that. Every round, there's going to be a combat amongst all the players that are allied with the major houses that are in the game. One of those players will have the greatest army, and that player will become the regent for the round. They're going to gain three legitimacy points. However, the other players around the table, they can potentially support the winner. They can support the player that becomes the regent. And if they do, then they're going to gain two legitimacy points. So it's actually just as almost as important to back the winner as it is to be the winner each round. If you can figure out who the winner is going to be each round and you can move those alliances around, you can accumulate a lot of points very rapidly. So how are we going to do that? Well, there are two decks here. This one is like a military deck. It contains 15 cards for each of the four factions in the game. And over here we have an event deck that contains events, uh, something like 30 events that are going to be in every game. There's also a fifth faction, which you would use if you were playing with a high number of players. Um, and you can mix and match the factions to give you some replayability over time because each faction comes with its own special unit. So at the beginning of the game, everybody is going to get four of these military cards and one event card. And then players are going to take turns. Our players are going to simultaneously bid for control of each of the four major houses. four major houses at the top here. So in order to bid for control of a house, you're going to take a card from your hand and place it face down on the table in front of you. Meanwhile, all the other players at the table are going to be doing the same thing so that they can try and bid for control of the houses as well. Uh, we need one more player. Let's have a player over here. This player over here. Once everybody has chosen the card, cards that they want to play face down, they will reveal them. And the only thing you're interested in with these cards is going to be the faction symbol and the amount of force, the amount of power that they produce. The player that has produced the most amount of force for each one of these factions will gain, will ally with that faction. So that, that faction will come and hold them for the round. So here I've played a three for Golden Stag. This player has played a two, so I will win Golden Stag. Golden Stag will come and play in front of me, so they're supporting my bid for the throne for the turn. This player over here has made a bid for Lightbringer, managed to win them, and this player at the top here has managed to get Hammerfast, and they will get them. Now, nobody here has managed to gain the Evergreen faction, so they're just going to stay in the center of the table. And all the cards that we used to bid for the round are just going to go into the discard pile. Middle. So once that great house is allied with you, it's going to stay allied with you for the rest of the game or until somebody comes and takes it off. So in a future round, I might bid on Evergreen with this soldier that's worth four. And if I manage to win that bid, then Evergreen is going to come and support me. But only one great house can support me at a time. So as soon as Evergreen comes to support me, Golden Stag will go back into the middle. Alternatively, on a future turn, I might choose to bid for the Lightbringer faction with this militia. And I can actually take it from in front of this player. If they didn't bid for the Lightbringer faction, then they didn't beat my two. 
Additionally, I can also bid multiple cards on a turn. So I can place two cards face down or even three cards. And when I turn it over, we're just going to add up the sum. So here I've produced four for the Lightbringer faction. But remember, you can only be allied with one faction at a time. So as soon as I do that, my Golden Stack faction will go away. And once everybody is allied with a faction, we are going to go into combat for the round. The combat is only going to take place between the players that have allied themselves with a major house. So here, the Golden Stag, Lightbringer, and Hammerfast players, they will be able to enter into the combat for the round. But this player over here that bid for Golden Stag and lost, they're not going to be able to bid, make a bid for the Onyx Crown. But they can still earn two legitimacy points for themselves if they can figure out which of these players is going to be the winner and back them. So how is that going to work? Combat works in two rounds. In the first round, players are going to be taking cards from their hands and placing them face up into one of the factions in front of them. So for instance, I might choose to play this militia into the Golden Stag army here. Note that this militia is actually a Lightbringer militia, so it doesn't have to belong to the matching army in order to be part of the army. Um, but if they do align with the, with the army, it's actually going to give you a bonus. This player over here, they've got this um, militia for Hammerfast, so they're going to play it to the Hammerfast player. So here it's going to be worth three because it's worth an extra one because it's aligned with the same house. Once every player has played one face-up card in front of every army, and we'll say this player plays here, then people can go and add cards face down to the armies. You can place up to two cards face down, and the second place that you play a card is going to be the uh, house that you back. So I might decide to play two cards, and I can place one card into this army, and then the second card that I add, I can add into my own army here. So I am backing myself. Now I could just as easily have looked at the situation and realized that I was not going to win, and chosen to back a Hammerfast player instead, thinking that I could make them win. It can help them to win and still earn my two legitimacy points for the round. Once all the players have added their cards face down into the different stacks, they're all going to get turned face up. Oh, don't want to turn that one face up just yet. They're all going to get turned face up, and then the armies are going to be resolved. So here we can see my army is worth two. These two armies together, are good. this army is going to be worth four plus one for the uh, Hammerfast. Uh, militiaman, because he gets plus one. And also this cell sword has a special ability that says I can discard one card from my hand, and if I do, then this card gets three. So here we're already at five. That player decides that's a good deal. They're going to discard a card from their hand, making this a total of eight. So eight versus two. And over here we can see this is two, four. This militiaman is a light bringer militiaman, so he's going to add one, so seven. But hang on, somebody's actually played an event card into this army. And here we can see, in particular, this is a betrayal event card. It said, this player reveals their hands to all other players and they may just mess, discard all peasants and militia in their hand and in this army. So they did have a militiaman in the army. That's going to go into the discard pile. And this is going to go into the event discard pile over here. So this player has ticked off. Somebody supported them, and if you remember, it was me, and has betrayed them in some way, shape, or form. So the final tallies are, my army has got two, this army has got four, this army has got eight, so this player wins the Onyx Crown for the round. This player will gain three legitimacy points to aid them in their bid for the final uh, win of the game. But because I backed them and they won, I will gain two legitimacy points. So I'm well on my way to win as well. Whereas the player that's been backed by Lightbringer is not doing so well. All the cards that have been played up to this point are going to be discarded. And the player that won and became the regent for the round, they're going to draw as many cards as there are players. One, two, three, four. And they have to distribute those cards among the players that back them. So here they might say, all right, uh, I'm going to give two to this player, to this Golden Stag player, um, because they helped me out and they helped me to win. 
And then I'm going to keep these other two for myself. Once all of that is finished for the round, everybody gets to draw two cards from this pile and one card from the event deck. Or alternatively, they can just draw three cards from this pile. You've got a hand limit of eight, so once you've actually got your hand, you need to figure out a way of whittling it back down to eight. And then we move on to the next round, which is going to start with another bid. Players are going to bid for alliances with the major houses. And players are going to uh, then, and then the players that are allied with the major houses are going to go into a combat. Each round, the player with the highest combat value is going to win the Onyx Crown, and it's going to become the new regent. And if that player has already achieved nine legitimacy points, then they immediately win the game. Now, as the regent, you get a couple of special abilities. One is that you can't lose your house card. You can give it up, but you can't lose it. So even if another player bids really high for it, like say if I bid, this knight and peasant with a total of six. I can't win Hammerfast from the player that is currently the regent. But if they bid for something else, they can give it up, and then Hammerfast goes back into the middle, and I can potentially have won that. As the regent, uh, you get to break all ties. So it's up to you uh, who wins in case of ties, and that includes in the final combat. As the regent, Whenever a support card is gained by another player, you have to discard one of the cards from your hand. And additionally, you can play three cards face down into one of the armies each turn instead of just two. You can't back other players if you're the regent, you actually have to back yourself. And of course you get the ability to distribute the spoils at the end of the round to people. That's pretty much it. That's how you play a game of rank. We'll move on to final thoughts. All right, so final thoughts time for Rain. I love this game. It's, um, it's amazing how much intrigue and backstabbery they can fit into just like a hundred or so cards. Um, you can, on your turn, or when it, sorry, when you've uh, managed to ally yourself with one of the great houses, sometimes you look down at your hand and you've got one really good card. And then what do you do? Do you, do you lead with something that's less good because you think you, uh, you, you might be able to trick people into thinking that maybe you're not going to win? Uh, do you put that card straight down on the table and giving you the strong kind of foot forward, hoping that you can convince other parties around the table that they want to come support you? Um, do you put that card into somebody else's army because you think supporting them is going to really help? Um, the event deck had so much kind of intrigue and craziness uh, because there's not just there's not just betrayal cards in here there's also positive events as well that are going to actually help uh, the player that you're playing it into and one of the cool things is that when you draw spoils at the end of the round and you you have to share those cards with the players that supported you but if there's a single betrayal card in there that rule goes away and you don't have to share those those spoils anymore so there was at least one circumstance where I was playing with some friends where I threw a betrayal card into my own support stack because I knew that would give me a ton of great cards at the end of the round. I knew it wasn't going to affect my chances of winning at all. Um, it, there is just, it keeps everybody engaged all of the time. You're constantly trying to figure out what's happening around the table. Um, I love it. I think it's a great game. I'm keeping my pledge. I can't wait to get a final copy of the game. Uh, and you should check it out. It's fantastic. Now, I did have just a couple of quick gripes about uh, the, the layout. One is um, on the cards, there's a big symbol at the bottom. There's a symbol off to the uh, right hand side. Uh, some of the cards have got like a special symbol next to that. Um, so there's actually a reason why most playing cards put all the content in the top left corner and that's so that when you splay them out in your hand you can see all the pertinent information about the cards that you're holding in your hand so you can make quick decisions without having to 
leaf through the cards one at a time, looking at them, trying to figure out what they all do. So I would, I would like to see the faction symbol and the force symbol and the special ability symbol all migrate into the top left corner. Um, I think that would be a, a good addition to the game. It unfortunately would make it look like a lot of other, a lot of other games, but the reason why a lot of those other games do stuff that way is for that usability reason. Uh, the other thing that's really cool here is that each of the major houses has one of the one of the five units has some special ability. There's the the Lightbringer one, the Firebow. Um, there is uh, let's see if I can find another one quickly here, the Iron Hand. I don't know if you can see that very well. If you get in glare. Anyway, um, which means that if you're playing with um, with five or, or fewer players, you're only going to see a small subset, or you're going you're to see a subset of all the special powers in the game. And then if you want to play again, you can just take one of the houses out, put the, the, the one that was missing back in, and then play again. And the game is now completely different because those uh, special abilities change things up so much. Anyway, I rambled on long enough. Uh, it's on Kickstarter at the moment. I think it's got uh, just a little bit over a week left to go. Um, please check it out. Thank you. Bye.